Welcome to our online class. I'm here with my daughter, Alexis J. She's going to be helping me with comments so that it's easy to find you. And I am going to log out of one browser and log into the other because I can never seem to follow comments. I'm just going to give you guys a couple seconds to get logged in. I hope that everybody can find us okay. Hey, Vicki. Oh, I see you guys starting to pop in. All right, so there we go. I got my volume off. We got the comments going. Alexis can see them. Life is good. Everything is great right up until you spill your coffee. It happens. <laughs> so uh, we finished the stuffing and um, in traditional form, we sampled it. And um, we had the regular sausage stuffing. I do, I do uh, stuffing like nobody else, like my mom. Um, and when we grew up, it was Jimmy Dean sausage in the stuffing. And then half the stuffing gets split and you do sausage and pepperoni. <laughs> so it's like um, pizza. The only thing it's missing is sauce. So cheers to the end of this coffee and the one that my husband just made me. <laughs> oh. I didn't cheers. <laughs> that was so rude. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. I'm afraid to throw it away in that. I have a recycle bin on that side. And I have a trash bin with a, a, a bat like a, a bag. Ha, huh, that's what you call it. On this side. Alright, so I think we are gonna jump right in. I did a little bit of a preview of tonight this week on my live and we layered heat embossing of course the cards over there I'll get it after and then um so I told you guys also that I just bought myself a brand new take your pick now I have an old one and I could have just bought the um the new nib um but I I splurged and I got myself a new take your pick so I can break this bad boy in tonight on the live. They have this um, tool that comes with it that you can also use in your stylus um, or your scoreboard and for scoring paper. And then of course it comes with an extra putty thing, which I love, but I'm gonna put those over to the side and go all the way over to the corner of the table because it's nice having Alexis because now if I need something to go that way, it can go all the way that way. <laughs> and I don't get so tripped up in my own space, right? All right, so how many of you have done heat embossing before? I just wanna hear from you. If you've had any um, heat embossing tragedies, I'd like to hear about those as well. I can tell you the biggest one that I run across is when you've had embossing powder for many number of years, and it goes bad. Um, so you might notice that I have a full set of Stampin' Up! embossing powders and it, they come in two different um, sections. Stampin' Up! sells the neutrals and then the metallics. Well, I don't have more than one set because over time, especially I think the black, the black will act funny and it won't puff up anymore or it like splatters wrong and you just know when it goes bad when you go to try and use it and it doesn't do the magic anymore so um they do have a shelf life so i only have one set of them in my studio and i really only need one so that's pretty cool so um if you have been on these free live classes you know that i will go from start to finish and i'll answer any questions that you have while we're live but I also will provide you with a four card kit for um, make and takes. So for a $35 order, you'll get the full PDF directions. Um, I already did the supply lists for you, um, but you get the full PDFs with all of the measurements, everything we used, ready to go, ready to print out. And I don't know if you notice, if you're a demonstrator, I don't put my name on the bottom of the PDF because I want you to be able to use them um, and reuse them in a class if you want. Um, so, um, Janice wants to be in my video, it says. I, I, I would love that, but I don't even know how to do that, so. 
Alexis is here. We can, we can, we can, you know, be in the video for you. Well, anyway, um, so this is the four card kit that you get with a $35 order. Now, you know, everybody is doing um, Black Friday specials, although Stampin' Up! did the Black Friday thing last week. And thank you for everybody that sent in your orders. I sent out hundreds of cards. For every $10, I sent out a card. So that was really cool. And it was fun to stuff people's, you know, packages with cards and put in surprises and stuff. For this workshop, if you spend 50, usually it's 60, I'm gonna include a package of the in color gems. Ah, I need to find them, hang on. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what my special is for Black Friday is for every 50 that you spend, I'll include another one. So if you do 150, you keep the hostess benefits um, and I'll send you three of them. If you do a $100 order merchandise, I'll send you two. And if you do 50, you get one in addition to your four card kit that you get with any $35 order. I hope that makes sense. I'll post all of that after, but I thought it was easier to just tell you about it. Making a graphic on the day before Turkey Day isn't really, you know, top of my list, you know? We, we had to go to Starbucks. Well, we had to send Dad to Starbucks. Right, because I made because I made the stuffing, and um, I forced her to watch. <laughs> Do you want to stay and make stuffing with me? No, I want to go to Starbucks. Stay and make stuffing with me. Doesn't matter. I still clean did all the cleanup myself. Just wait someday. <laughs> all right, so let's get started. We'll jump right in with this four card class. If you have questions as we go, please type them in. Alexis is on the keyboard. And we are here. I want to see your comments here. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Yes. Hello, everybody. Okay, cool. So if you have questions, please fire away. Um, I'm going to flip the camera and try not to break anything this time. It happens. It's a thing. Oh, I could use a, a mat and a, um, and a paper. Just watch the coffee. I got a nice, fresh coffee in my... Um, Phuket Thailand mug. So, um, ta-da, cheers to you. Happy day before Thanksgiving. Thank you, Alexis. Wow, I wish I had her here the whole time, like for every, um, my goodness. So I'm just tearing into the, to the so these are pre-done. Um, I have a whole bunch of packets already completed. So if you do decide that you want to place an order on the host code, which I posted, um, and all the links to the supply have the host code embedded, so you don't even need to look for it if you click on any of those links I did. But um, let's see which one. Oh, I don't want that one first. And I don't want that one either. <laughs> uh, this is the one. <laughs> I want to start with this guy, or this girl. So I don't know if you guys know, but Alexis just made her confirmation this month or this past month, and I made these invitations, um, and this little angel inspired me, and I, I had so much reaction when I posted this card online that I knew that I had to do some more with, um, with our um, little angel here. So we're gonna start from scratch, um, because not everybody who comes to these online workshops knows exactly what they're doing, so I wanna make sure that we start from the very beginning and that everybody feels super comfortable. So, I'm gonna get a block. I don't know if she'll fit. Nope, I need a bigger block. So we're gonna do this block. And rather than try and stamp twice, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna load these stamps, and this is these are cling stamps. You'll notice I already trimmed some of it. Um, I like to trim my stamps when they're new so that I don't accidentally catch this edge that can happen, you know? Um, but I'm gonna put these stamps on the block kind of straight, like straight with the block, and it is not straight with the block, hang on. I use this ledge to see where the line is gonna be and then I just have to line my block up with the with the paper. So she's gonna dance right in there. And then I'm gonna get rid of this for a second so I can see where I'm going. That 
that's a good question, Robin. Go ahead, Alexis, read that back. Robin White is asking, is there a trick for getting even coverage with embossing powder? The powder is new. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to first grab some computer paper because having a way to funnel the powder back into the jar is super important. And I think more than worrying about if the powder is even, I think getting the Versamark even is more important because it's a clear ink. So you don't know if you're actually hitting it when you, when you go to tap the ink on. Now, I'm using a brand spanking new pad because like I do, I have older ones that look kind of black and have been refilled a hundred times. But every now and then I'll splurge and get myself a brand new one. And the other one I had on the table dried out. So I pulled this one out during my live this week. So now I'm gonna, sorry, headbutt the camera. Right, Alexis is laughing again. I love it when she laughs. Okay, and then I'm gonna line my block up with the paper because we, we did the, the even block thing, right? And I tried to get the Versamark nice and straight, right? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with the black for this one. And I know we can't see anything yet, but it's coming. So I'm dumping it on there and I have computer paper underneath to make it easy to funnel this back into the jar. And see, my Versamark was nice and even, so the powder will stay pretty even. I'm gonna put this off to the side and I'm gonna say, Alexis, don't sneeze. Because you wouldn't wanna sneeze when you have an open powder like that on the table. It would be yucky. And then I'd need new embossing powder. <laughs> All right, so this is just the first one, right? But it's it's exciting when you get to see it really start to happen, you know? And I, you can see I've got black powder on this one as well. So I'm gonna um, put those off to the side and know that they're my black pile. And I'm gonna leave this here for a second. And then I'm gonna bring um, my girl back in. So cute, I can't stand it. Now at this point, She's still got just powder. So if I were to heat it, I don't know if you can catch this on the camera, but there, there are a couple of little tiny flecks. So this is where you need a paintbrush. Now, there is a tool called an embossing buddy that you can buy at the big box stores. It looks like a little resin bag or whatever. And I have one in the drawer, but I almost never use it because I just clean up with a paintbrush and it's just as effective for me. If you find that, hey look, Stampin' Up! used to have paint brushes. <laughs> anyway, if you find that um, it's annoying, then you could get one of those embossing buddies and it keeps the excess powder from flecking on you. Wow, gotta be careful. <laughs> um, but I think we're in pretty good shape and I'm ready to heat this. So I've got my embossing gun right here. And um, there are three settings off. Setting one is for heat setting um, ink. And then for melting embossing powder, you need setting two. I like to let my heat gun heat up for a second. So I'm just gonna um, hold this image away from my fingers. And then once I think it's warmed up just a little bit, I'm gonna point it at my image. Now, hopefully, I'm gonna come closer so you can see. Hopefully, you'll see the magic because it really does darken up. Are you seeing that on camera, Lex? I don't know. So, I did that half, and I'm changing positions from my fingers. Never point the heat gun at your hand because that hurts. Yay, Alexis is saying you can catch it on the camera. I love it. Where the angle I'm holding it at, like I can't see it because I'm trying to do it for you guys. But, so if you ever do something to a piece of paper and it starts to warp, you do the exact same thing to the other side and it will warp the paper back. So if, you're, if you've wet a piece of paper down for watercoloring, if you wet the back, you can form it back with your fingers and now it won't be warped anymore. Um, just a little tip. So I am checking this with my eyeball to make sure that I see shiny on all of it. So now 
This image is kind of cooling down. I don't want to run my finger through it until I'm sure that it's cool because people say, is this done? And no, it's not. <laughs> But it, once you give it a couple seconds, it's fine. It's it's raised and it's so fun to run your finger over. Um, and at this point, when I got to the confirmation card, I actually used um, a marker and outlined the angel. And then I went over it with Wink Estella and uh, picked up some of the marker color off a plastic bag and kind of filled in. So if you decide that you want to color yours, you can. But I thought tonight we would just stick to the main topic of embossing yeah you know and and uh robin you may not even need a new versamark pad you might just need the reinker one thing i love about stampin up is every single ink pad that we sell has reinkers so once you've made the investment in the actual ink pad i mean i could have rooted through my drawer and found the refill for this one but i was being lazy and i had already bought a new one so just saying I would try the refill first. Hey, Denise, I'm so excited everybody's here. Wow. I, well, I, so I, I knew that tonight there would be a few people. My customer, Isla Ray, was telling me how she has a pie night at her house um, the night before Thanksgiving. And tonight she has 40 to 50 people come into her house all to make their own pies and they take them home for Thanksgiving and cook them the next day. And I was like, that's a lot of pie. So Isla Ray um, is gonna watch this on the hashtag replay and uh, that's totally acceptable. <laughs> so I just put this designer series paper down. Alexis is like, that's a, that sounds like a cool tradition. She's giggling beside me. She's like, wow, that's awesome. So this is mint macaron cardstock and I just cut a three inch strip to go right on the front. But before I stick this down, I'm gonna take my seal plus when I can find it. See what happens when I go live? I can't find a thing. I'm gonna tack it right here. Oh, apple crisp, yummy. Denise, I am with you, girlfriend. You know, so Brian, once in a while, will make me, I don't know if you guys know it, but I, my diet needs to be kind of like a diabetic diet. I am not diabetic, I had surgery um, many moons ago. Um, and now I'm not allowed to have sugar. It's, it's, a, it, it was an opt-in thing. I did it on purpose. Yes. And, uh, he'll make me a Splenda apple crisp. And so he makes it with brown sugar, Splenda brown sugar and, um, regular Splenda. Can I also say, I feel like the Splenda one is way better than some of the ones we get out. Like I like the Splenda one better. <laughs> it is. It's it's really good. He he makes it. Fancy. Nobody makes it like him though, you know? So I got my adhesive on here, right? On the top and the bottom. And then I ran my ribbon across. So now this is all sticky and ready to stick on my card front. I also tacked my ribbon behind where my little angel is going to sit. So um, you won't see the adhesive on the rib ribbon even if I go over here, which I might. It's kind of pretty over there, huh? So um, anyway, the adhesive's already here on the top and bottom and I used Seal Plus. I've had a couple of people recently ask me about Seal and Seal Plus and said that they were having trouble getting it to come off the roller. And there is a method. If you're, if you're putting, I'm gonna do it sideways so you can see it on the video, but if you're putting Seal on, and you're trying to get this to lay down perfectly flat, I would say you're gonna have much more luck if you when you're doing your adhesive to do it at a 90 degree angle um, because then this super sticky stuff will actually break and you'll have it at the tip. So I find it much easier if I have it at the tip on the release like this and I pull back and then the next piece is right there. So I'm, I, I rarely have problems with Seal Plus. I don't wanna say that I, that I don't have problems with it because then um, it'll break right here. <laughs> it's fair right yep. so um I'm just gonna put this on I am gonna like hang it off the side so the first one was straight in the middle and this one I'm feeling I think it's just because I feel like off-roading today it is sticky back there I swear okay sugar is bad anyways yeah um <laughs> Juliana 
I don't know how to say this other than this is my saying. Whenever we're out, I say sugar's the devil. <laughs> Do you want any of this? Yes, yeah, sugar's the devil. I'll have one bite. I'm not allowed more. If I have, okay, so I just fast forwarded this a little bit. And now that it's really coming out, I am backing off because it's doing the toothpaste thing. So if you have a brand new wink, uh, a brand new take your pick, like I just got this brand new, um, definitely forward it until the stuff starts coming out. But the minute it comes out, back off because it'll it'll do the toothpaste thing on you too. Okay, so I have these in color gems, and these are the things that you can get for free with every fifty dollar order. Um, until I close this host code, I think it's gonna be November 30th. So I will leave this open for a full week so that Isla Ray can come and um, rewatch the video when she's done with her pie night. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy for her, she's so cute. All right, she's gonna laugh when she hears that I told her story, but it was like the best one I heard so far. So that's the first card, pretty simple. Well, let's go into the next one. Um, so when I package up my cards, I take the envelope and I sit it here and then I just put it in a clear bag. So right now this one doesn't have an envelope with it, but when I package them up, I sell my cards at a local florist. All I have to do with this one is slip it in the clear bag and it'll be ready to go down to my friend at the florist. I have two blue cards, so I have to double check. Nope, that's the last one. <clears throat> it's all about the envelope color. So this is the next one I wanna show you. And I actually did this color, this card in two different colors. So if you look at the supply list of this class, I wanted to make it easy to recreate so you don't need all the embossing powders that Stampin' Up! create. <laughs> in order to recreate the class. So I did it in white because we did white, clear, and black for the class. But I also created this card in silver and it is stunning. So I wanted to show you this and I put the silver embossing powder at the bottom of the supply list just in case you're in love with it as much as I am. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one to the side. Um, and that one, that's what, actually the last card. Silly girl. This is the one that I wanna show you right next. So this has a really cool technique. Um, notice that this is not black or white. We're using clear here. And we need our angel on a block. She's so awesome. You made cheesecake. Well, so cheesecake is another go-to for me because cheesecake doesn't have a lot of sugar in it either. I got blue. She, Alexis is so like with it. She's like, mom, I got you. She went to go get the Misty Moonlight ink pad and it's already here on the table. She missed it in the labyrinth of things that I have beside me. So for this one, um, with Sharon, um, so Julianne, I don't have the price list in front of me, but if you go to the top of this video, I not only listed the links, but the prices of every single item that I used. So it's all here at the top of the video if you go up and uh, it's just hard for me to do both. So I inked up with Versamark like we did with the last card, right? Although Alexis is probably gonna answer you now, which is pretty awesome. She could even copy and paste that link for you maybe. But it just depends on which item you're talking about too. Was it the clear embossing powder? You know, so it will, she, the best way is to go to the top and just find the one that you wanted. But I'll tell you that the metallic embossing powder is all at the bottom. Oh, and look who this ink pad belongs to. <laughs> So I inked up with Versamark and I'm noticing in the middle there was there was like a missing little spot where the blue wasn't picking up but so I went with the Versamark and then I went right into the ink pad and now I'm going to stamp her right in the middle. Well I'm over a little bit but that's good because I'm going to put a sentiment here and then I'm going to bring in my paper 
and open up my clear embossing powder. So this one is clear. So I inked up in Versamark and then we used um, Misty Moonlight Ink Classic right on top. And it's wet, right? Ta-da! <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. Alexis is laughing because I'm, I'm dumped the whole jar of powder, but it's okay. It's gonna go right back in. Just don't sneeze. Now I'm gonna put this one to the side because while I have this out, I want to do the other, um, the other thing. We need the other sentiment, the angels sentiment. So here we go. Oh, my cards go for five dollars each at the florist shop. Good question. Um, just think, I sent them out last week on a special that you got a free card with every $10 you spent, but I charge $5 for my cards down at the florist, which is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna funnel this back in, but I'm gonna use it here in a second. So hang on one minute. Nope, not yet, please. Um, no distracting me, Lex, no distracting me. I have enough problems getting distracted all on my own. What did I do with my, oh, there it is. I got my shiny new Versamark. I got my block. I'm lining up my image so that my words are gonna be straight at the bottom of the block where the block turns. Ink up in Versamark. Ink up. So we did this twice. Ink up in Misty Moonlight. And I'm turning it over and I was like, oh, that's not even. So I can do it again. And then I'm gonna stamp it. crooked. <laughs> well, it's a good thing they make two sides. This is going to be wet. <laughs> now I need the cleaner. So in between, um, and I need the spray too, in between, and I'm going to spray it over here because if I spray right here, you know it's going to get my powder. So I sprayed this side and this is the side that's the wet side and I only did a couple squirts and it would clean my actual whole stamp set that I was just playing with. So wash and dry, wash and dry. I don't need to, um, if you end up with suds, you've put too much cleaner, but I like this because you're not wasting the product when you have both. Okay. Can you clean your stamp with just the chamois? Yes, you can. Um, but I prefer the mist, especially with the red rubber. Um, the, the Stampin' Mist, has conditioner in it that will condition not only clean your stamps but it conditions it over time so you can abs absolutely just use the chamois and the chamois is designed with photopolymer stamps in mind but I with the red rubber I'm a purist I do love my stamp and mist and scrub so and I did stamp it crooked so what happened <laughs> I you know it's difficult sometimes to, to get the right um the right angle because I am, I will headbutt the camera if I get directly on top of this image. So it's just vantage point. So I'm gonna try and do this again and hopefully it won't be crooked, but if it is, I'm just gonna go with it, okay? So I inked up in the Versamark and then I'm, I inked up in the blue and now I'm lining up the block with the paper like I said I was gonna do the first time and voila, now it's straight, go figure. And then that can go to the end, I think. I don't think I need that one again. I'm gonna pour the powder on. And I still, <laughs> I still got it all on there. And it is, you can see how muted it looks, but it's okay. I'm gonna funnel this back in and put the cover on before I do anything else. Yep, no, <laughs> Alexis is like still on the sneezing thing. Don't sneeze when you have embossing powder or glitter on the table. Seriously, okay. It just snowed in my trash barrel. I missed some of the funnel. Okay, so we're gonna heat up the embossing gun again. Hopefully Alexis is gonna go find my Misty Moonlight marker if I have one. And if I don't, actually, 
a Misty Moonlight marker, and how about a blender pen? Because I want to show you guys another little tip. But here we go. We're going to put this on. We're going to let it heat up. I'm on setting two all the way up where we're going to melt the powder. Oh, and look, I'm going to leave it right there for a second. I'm going to let it heat my Stampin' Mist. I'm going to grab a paintbrush because I got a little bit of a funky cherub right there. Because once you heat it, those little flecks aren't going away. All right, so I found it. Looked like a little hair or something that was stuck, maybe from just hanging out on the table for a few minutes. But it's okay that I didn't heat it up right away. You noticed how much time lapsed between the time that I stamped the first, I, first one, poured the powder on, set it to the side, and then... I did the same thing with the second one, and here I am just heating the first thing. It's okay. It didn't dry. Oh, my gosh. Look at her. She just popped off the page. Yeah. Alexis is like, oh, my God, that's so pretty. She's, like, doing Morse code at the screen. Like, I'm, I'm going to watch. I just don't want to burn myself. It's, it's a thing. So here we go. It's going to heat up again like magic. And now I've embossed in the misty moonlight. <sighs> feels so romantic. Okay. Ta-da. So that, you would, you would have to clean your stamp in between every time. So when I messed this one up and I was a little bit crooked, I did that on purpose so I could show you. <laughs> Alexis is like, I'm not buying it. All right. So there are three different ways you can edge. I want to add a little bit of edge to this to add another layer, but I don't want to cut another layer of paper. So this would be white on white, but I really want the blue um, to be, so you can go direct into the ink pad, and I did do that for this one. Like I, I went this way, and then I turned it over, and I went this way to get the inside of that little V. That's the hardest part, right? But there's other ways that you can do it if you're not brave enough to do it with the V. Um, by the way, I've already punched these for you. So I used the um, Pick a Banners punch. They come, um, the banners are either an inch, three quarters, or half. But all you do is push it in and it will make the perfect V for you. But another way to edge these is to, to do bottoms up with your marker and go around like this. Now, if you don't have the Misty Moonlight marker, you can also grab a blender pen because the blender pens are plain, right? They have no ink, but you can go right into your ink pad with the blender pen and treat it like a marker and go face up and mark your cardstock with that. So there's three different ways that you can do it. And just so that I'm sure that I got all of them. Oh, and the blender pen, you're probably gonna wanna know when you're done, you just take it and you scribble on a scrap of paper and notice I'm not doing it this way because I don't want to wear down my tip. I'm just kind of scribbling on an angle until the color goes away. And I really did saturate that pretty good. So I'll clean that after we get off the, but you get the idea, right? So um, I'm going to just set this aside. I'm going to use the marker for the rest of it, but you can do it any of those three methods. Okay. My hands are chilly. So here's the piece for the inside of my card. And again, all of these pieces are pre-cut for people who place an order, I, I, I got you. And um, this is pre-embossed. So normally I would put adhesive on the back of the two small pieces, but um, to save time, I'm gonna do this. And then we'll just um, go the other way. So. I don't know where my sample went, but whatever. I'm gonna just make it however it falls. But So I put the adhesive down on the embossed paper this time and I'm just sticking the designer paper to it. These are five and a quarter inch strips. Um, this one was three quarters inch wide and this is a half inch. Okay, and then where's my girl? Oh, there she is. Isn't she pretty? Just like, just like this one over here. Isn't she pretty? Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay, so I got my um, seal plus here and I'm gonna lay that down next. And now I have my banner and I wanna see where this is gonna lay before I do anything. So I'm gonna pretend that I've already stuck it down and you can see where my blue line ends, right? So I wanna flip this over and trim it and then finish the blue line before I stick it down. So I'm gonna do this, get rid of my scrap. Now I can finish the edging. And like I said, you can do this either with your ink pad, you can do it with your marker, you can do it with a blender pen and your ink pad, however you're most comfortable. But notice that I am not going this way. If you go this way, you are much more likely to write on your project. This way, um, if you go off rodent, you'll be writing on the back. So um, that's my edging tip. Okay, so now I have a nice blue edge that goes all the way around instead of stopping, right? And when I go to lay this down on the white, it will, nobody's gonna know if you, paint, if you don't paint behind the toilet. <laughs> Here we go. I got my sentiment right here. And you notice I'm a little crooked. Watch this. We're gonna make it straight. We're gonna make the word straight. And I'm gonna put the, the banner on crooked like a boss because now it looks like I meant to do it that way. And I did, didn't I? All right, so I'm gonna add some more Seal Plus. And here we go. So this is the second card. So this is the one that shows you that you can emboss with any color that you happen to own in your arsenal. Although, who wouldn't wanna stamp in the misty moonlight? I know that I just lost a so this is why it would be good to spend the 50 and get a full package of these, because if not, they might be sticking to you. <laughs> Hello, winter is here. There, here comes the static. Let's see, so we got, ugh. we got this guy, and it's much easier to get off the transfer sheet when you have a full sheet and not these little buggers, but it's all good. I'm not complaining, right? No room for complainers, mom. Here we go. <laughs> you should see her face, she's so funny. All right, so happy Thanksgiving to you too, Val. <sighs> All right, so there's the transfer sheet and that can go, but you see how pretty she came out and there's the original um, and it just makes it so pretty. Ta-da! Okay. And I love the, the I love how that purple picks up. This um this paper is that it's called silver, but um there are two sheets that are definitely purple and then there's a silver and this is the middle one. So it's not the darkest and it's not the silver one. It's the it's the one in between which picks up that purple really nice with the misty moonlight. All right, so moving right along. This is the one where it all started because it reminded me so much of the confirmation card. Yeah, no, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta move all this stuff off so I have room. Okay, so I need to take my girl off the big block because we had her on the one that had the sentiment, but she's gonna be all by herself. She's the star now. And I can put that off. And here we go, I'm gonna ink her up in Versamark. So this is where people start burning their fingers because it's a small little space, right? But we're gonna be okay. Um, and I gotta grab my black powder paper. Thanks, Lex. It's like being a surgeon. Black. Just shout out what you need, Mom. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I'm pouring it on. Pour it on thick. Did you have a question? Go ahead and read it. Um, Who's... Jul Juliana Harris is asking, how did you cut edging? How did I cut edging? 
I'm not understanding the question. I'm sorry. How did I cut edging? Do you know what she means? Maybe like how did you get the edging on the last card? Or... Well, I just oh maybe the die cut. The um... oh yeah these do you mean do you mean Juliana? Just let me know. Do you mean the gray granite um, shape here? Um, because that's a die. It's the scalloped and contours die. Here, I just want to flick the back of this because it's got more static than normal. But you notice it's kind of dry and chilly out here. So static and dry and chilly all go together. Yeah, was that it, Juliana? Alexis, was that it? Yep, that was oh, it. Oh, good, good, good. So yeah, I used the, um, the, the scalloped contours dies. And actually, I did that through this whole entire card class. So... Um, all the other samples also use this is a bigger one it's all out of the one die set um, that I picked to, to go with um, so the scalloped ones will all right so I put I'm gonna put this one to the side and do like I did on the on the last one and not heat it up right away and I'm gonna stamp on my designer paper so there's that shape and you know what's cool about this one? It almost, it cuts like a little slice in, but I wanted it to be a border for this one. So you could just emboss it straight on this and you'd have enough. I, I used this a lot. Um, in fact, this is the one, one of the stamp sets that I actually have, uh, the die cuts that I have two of. I use them so often that I own two sets so that if I'm cutting for a class for 48 people, like I did for this one, um, <laughs> that I won't have to go back and like I can do two at a time. Makes it much easier. So this is, I'm putting it straight on the block. So I'm lining up the words again with the with that line on my stamp. And I am taking my life into my own hands here, leaving the embossing powder right there while I'm doing this, but I'm feeling confident. <sighs> I know. I said confident and she almost, yeah. Anyway, ta-da, hopefully it's straight. And then I'll pour a little more black powder on there, or a lot. Oh, look at how pretty that came out. See, confidence is good. <laughs> Lesson of the night. <laughs> this paper, um, yeah, this is the whimsy, um, the whimsy paper, I gotta tell you, I, this is gonna carry right through my winter birthdays. I know that it's going out next month, but it is absolutely my favorite designer paper of the holiday catalog. Um, I absolutely love it. Okay, so I got my two pieces to heat up. I have my embossing. I didn't sneeze, that's a good thing. Yep. We, when Alexis was a baby, we used to do the Bugs Bunny thing, like we pretend that we were gonna sneeze. You go the ah, 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 choo, and you wouldn't really sneeze. And she would laugh, so maybe that's why she thinks it's so funny, you know. I'm glad she still laughs at my jokes. She turned 17 this week. I'm very lucky that I have a daughter that will laugh at my jokes since she's 17. I thought that was a mistake, but now I see that it's not. The E in Earth actually does have that little detail on the stamp. That's cool. What a gorgeous stamp. Ugh. Okay, so I am, now I'm embossing on designer paper. And look at the iridescence of that um, whimsy paper. It's awesome. And like I said, if you're looking for any of the item numbers, or where you can order them, it, their links are all at the top and the host code is already attached for you. So when you click on the link, it should bring you right into my store and it should give you, um, you can you can click and then add and then come back and click and it, it should remember you as long as you're signed in to the Stampin' Up! website. Also, if you're looking on a computer, it might be listed under overview and see more. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's that pesky little button. Thank you, Lex. So here we go. I'm melting away. I love it. I just, but you notice 
I am still holding this tiny little piece of paper away from my fingers. And then when it's time to turn and burn, I can turn but not burn my hand. Ta-da! I really need to have Alexis present at every single one of my lives. It would, it would, we'd have to do a little rescheduling, but she laughs at all my jokes. It's kind of cool. It's like having you guys right here in the room with me. That was a good catch. They, That's they, a very good catch, Mom. The heat gun just started to slide. It's dancing on me. So I'm going to attach this. And um, there, it's a funky measurement. I'm really sorry. I cut it to size the, the, the inside of the contour dies. But I will tell you that full supply list and measurements are on the PDF for anybody who get, wants the kit in the mail. So it's just 35 to get the kit shipped to your door. And if you do 50, I will do um, the in-color gems. And if you do 100, I will do two in-color gems. So for every 50, you get another set. And if you're going over 150, um, talk to me about getting the starter kit. Did you guys know? So Stampin' Up! is doing a starter kit special. Um, I'm giving you guys so much ribbon here, so you're going to have way more than you need. If you really wanted to on this card, you could tie a bow. Just saying. Um, anyway, I, I digress. Stampin' Up! is giving you a deal if you're not already a demonstrator. You can get a starter kit for $75, and you pick out $125 in whatever you want. You pay sales tax for your state, if, um, and free shipping. So <laughs> there's a question. Alexis is typing feverishly. I love it. So I feel like I'm like not, I don't even need to be part of the conversation. That's awesome. Was it? I need to get. How did you get the V shape on the, oh, on the sentiment? Yep. That's a punch. Um, it's a pick a banners punch. Lex, do you want to get up and get it and I'll show them? <laughs> yep, the pick of banners punch, and the link is up top. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee because I've been talking for a little bit now. And I did switch to decaf, just so you know. I do want to sleep at some point today. So this is the punch that I use to make the V, and it's up at the top. And um, to unlock it, it's here. And you cut your paper to either one inch three quarters of an inch or a half an inch, and you put it in and punch. And on this side, you get a V. And on this side, you get a pencil. <laughs> That's what I call it. I call it the pencil punch. Um, go ahead. If you don't have that punch. Oh, if you don't have that punch, um, I, let me see. I need a piece of scrap paper. Well, give me a second and I'll come back to that because I need, I need scrap paper for that to work. Um, do we have any scraps? We might. Of course, we don't because we took up. Okay, yeah, yeah, we took out the trash this morning, so we'll. I'll get back to that question in just a minute. It's an it's an easy solution, but I do love the punch. Um, it makes my life easy. <sighs> so anyway, just because I don't have the paper in front of me, I'm gonna stay on topic, and then I'll come back and answer that question at the end. So this one I am gonna attach onto my card front so that two sides are equal. Um, I went to art school and I had a professor, we, we had this, um, it was a typography class. So we used to make all kinds of artwork out of letters and numbers and it was really fun and it was super easy. So the art teacher decided that it was too easy and he wanted to make sure that he knew that when we went out into the workforce and we did get published or we did end up in a, in an art studio that we would be able to have all of our artwork kind of prom pretty. So he suggested that no matter where you're going, three sides equal on a card, like for example, like with this one, three sides equal, um, even if the bottom doesn't line up, it makes it look correct. So um, I look around, uh, oh, let me see the confirmation card. So if this were cut down so it were a little bit shorter, right, on both sides, I would make the white border three sides equal, but I went edge to edge on that. But when I stick 
my cardstock together, um, I'm always looking to make sure from the top that I have three sides equal. So I'm looking at this pink border and making sure that all three sides are equal distant from like from the edge. And then it wouldn't matter if the bottom wasn't perfectly cut, although I cut these for you so that they would be. Um, but it really does make a huge difference when you put your projects together. And I'm not trying to place it down in the middle of the card and edge this way and this way. I'm only looking at those three spots. So it makes it much easier to get my eyeballs around it. Good, good tips. Okay, moving right along. I do need you to find me some scrap paper, maybe on that table, so that at the end I can answer Linda's question. All right, and maybe cut me like a one of each, like a one inch. She's so awesome, isn't she? How lucky am I? All right, so for this one, Again, all of the rhinestones that you need should be in here, unless you're like me and you lose stuff. Oh, they're in between the layers, so just be careful when you open. Oh, it's over here, it fell, see? You gotta be careful when you open the envelope. We do it all visually though, so I know that it all went in there. And then when it sticks to you, you're just all done. Okay, it is so dry in here today. I'm gonna start with the, with the end. Doesn't everybody wanna start at the end? I'm laying this piece of ribbon down on the inside of my card and I know that I'm going to tack it underneath here and here. So I'm going to add just a little bit of adhesive on both sides and tack it. Now what that does, first of all, when I finish the card, it's going to be tacked here, right? And look at how pretty that is. But when I open the card, now I can tack in um, a gift card and there's no adhesive here. So I can use a glue dot and tack a gift card in there for somebody um, when the card is finished. So it becomes a gift card holder. And I'm gonna start again with my big angel when I find her. Oh, there she is. Thanks, Lex. Boy, she's really a good assistant. All right, and then I need the Urine Angel out of the stamp set. So this time, um, instead of stamping, adding the powder, stamping again, I'm gonna just, and again, I'm trying to get it straight on the block so I know where it's gonna land, right? I'm gonna ink here. Thanks for being with me tonight. I know like a lot of you might like be home like me cooking, um, but I thought it was just a good night. And then for people that aren't celebrating with family, well, you can celebrate here with me, your stamping family. So there she is. You can see her lighten up the stage here. And this is the one that I did both with the white or the silver, but I wanted you to know that you don't need to buy two sets of um, embossing powders to get started. You could start with one and see how you like it. Although I have to say, it's pretty magical. Like it is out of, from the very beginning, since I started being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, it is the number one favorite new stamper technique. Um, and it, because it, because it's magic. Here we go. So that's the powder, it's sticking to my Versamark, and look, it's also sticking to my paper. All right, so it's snowing in here. I'm gonna just fix some of that. Well, this is good, because if I had heated that up, all of that, uh-oh. And if you do, if you, if you use too much paintbrush, it's a thing too. It is super staticky in here, though. I mean, you see what's going on with my, my rhinestones. I just wanted to get that one little guy off, but it doesn't look like it's gonna come off. All right. That's another good method. <laughs> the old flick. Okay, hang on, let me get the powder back into the jug. So after a 